All right. Hi, everyone. Um, um, so this is, we are Tuesday, May 21st, our first buildings and facilities meeting this year. Woohoo! Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. So when I call your name, please unmute your mics, which are already unmuted. And um, just let just let me know that you can we can hear you. Um, George, here. Eugene, here. All right, and Sharon, I, we don't. Okay, I don't count, but I'm here. Hi. <laughs> so I think the first order on our agenda <laughs> is the minutes. Um. So let's so we just go around. Is there a second? And like we need. Oh, Eugene, did you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to make a statement. My spouse is employed by the Friends of the Jones as a, a, a paid employee for the capital campaign. But for this meeting, I feel that I can perform my my duties in an unbiased and, and neutral way. So okay. just wanted to make that statement just in case. All right. Thanks, Eugene. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the first order is to approve the minutes from last month. Um, can I get someone to second that or... Second. For, okay. Um, are there any changes? Anyone have any changes or comments? No. All right. Um, so I'll just call your name. Eugene? I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I think I have to abstain from approving the minutes. Actually, according to Chris Hoffman, um, mm -hmm. uh, as long as you feel that the minutes have been written, um, with good intent and, and um then you can approve the minutes okay i mean i read through them so they they look fine to me but not having been there um just that's a, a caveat so i'll i'll approve based on what we just talked about then okay and um george sorry uh yes approve okay and i approve um i do want to say that since then um you know we all have all visited the renovated North Amherst building and it's it's gorgeous and um, gives me hope for the future. As so as we all know, our next order of business is public comment. Um, so I see we have nine attendees. Um, so if you would like to make comment, please raise your hands and we'll let you into the room. Um, I see one hand up, uh, three hands up. Okay, so let's go with, I see, I saw Bob's hand go up first, Bob Pam. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Um, the question is, what do we do next? with respect to planning for a non-renovated, non-expanded library. Um, building and facilities has now been tasked with considering what to do next. Um, I won't be on the board as this work proceeds, but it is important to set out just what you need to accomplish. The town will be in charge of the large physical changes that all agree are needed. First priorities have been summarized as HVAC, roof, and fire suppression. I think that a three-year time frame for accomplishing these is believable. That should be negotiated with the town staff, but the critical questions will be what the HVAC work will include. I've been pretty clear that even a basic upgrade replacement of the gas-fired boilers can achieve substantial energy efficiencies because modern ones achieve 90% plus efficiencies, old ones would be lucky to exceed 70%. <clears throat> but it would be much better to replace them with commercial scale air source heat pumps, as was planned for the expansion project. Whether they can be located on the ground next to the building or placed above on a roof structure will depend on how a replacement for the atrium is designed. The glass roof, if it is retained, could be smaller with a strong solid component able to support heat pumps. The latter choice would probably require the building to be closed and emptied at least partially to allow it, 
while an external placement could probably be done with minimal displacement. If a heat pump is used, then the space needed in the room currently devoted to the boiler could be drastically reduced and that space could be repurposed. However, to make the new heating system most useful, the current mechanical valves need to be replaced with electronically controlled valves. I don't know how hard it is to access them and whether there are other issues with those pipes. I am sure there are other issues, but that is what I have been thinking about. I've also suggested that even if heat pumps are not installed building-wide, they should definitely be considered for use for special collections in the Woodbury room. Each is closed off and has special needs due to their hours or climate control requirements. You don't need me to lay out the work to be done over the next couple of years. Nonetheless, since this is my last chance to speak on what has been a minor fixation of mine for several years, I might as well offer a few suggestions. On the ground floor, I obviously hope that the boiler room will become available for other uses. The Woodbury room is a large space which is only needed at its full size occasionally. A movable partition that could allow two groups to use it simultaneously makes sense to me. This could ease the ESL issue of finding space for tutoring in small group sessions. Similarly, the craft room is empty much of the time. It could be scheduled for other uses often, especially during school hours. <clears throat> On the first floor, there should be two single stall bathrooms. They should be located under the piping for water and waste in the staff rooms above which I think puts them in the rear of the reference area. The media room is one of the most attractive spaces in the library. The bins for vinyl have been reduced and should now be placed against the walls so that there is more seating and maybe a way to play music and or perform sometimes. Above the first floor, the 1928 building is separated from the 1990s edition. The old building second floor has one public room while the rest is used for processing materials, although the rooms they are in are wonderful. The addition contains special collections, the art display room and a miscellaneous children's room. Um, the children's room is, is basically unused um, and um, anything that is in the, the, that children's space should be moved to where the kids can actually get to it and would use it. Um, that again creates a space which we can repurpose. The third floor is uh, at this point, I suspect, probably being emptied out, and uh, we will have to do some thinking about how the second and third floors of the old building will uh, be used in the future. And the, um, the, the 1993 spaces um, will be available for some changes uh, in whatever ways you think. I am not going to try to pretend that I have a clear idea of, of any of those things, but even without uh, any major physical changes to the building other than the HVAC, uh, atrium ceiling and uh, fire suppression systems, those can all be done for reasonably small amounts of money. Thank you. Uh, Maria? Thank you, Maria Kopicki, South Amherst. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Farah, thank you for, for recording the meeting. This is, it's very helpful to have these recorded, particularly something, something uh, as in-depth and detailed as I expect this to be. Um, as you are considering what can be done, um, I think it's really important that we have fresh eyes and fresh ideas on on this process and, and on our thinking. And I think what is really important, and I appreciate all of Bob's um, comments, 
uh, is to have a broader perspective. And with all due respect to the, the three members of this committee, I don't think that that is um, a broad enough group of people and perspectives to really think this through and um, and come up with different alternatives and how you would approach this. Um, I think the town has to be uh, represented here, not just the library as the money uh, for this will undoubtedly, at least part of it come from the town. Um, so I really encourage you to broaden the group of people that is assembled to come up with these, uh, this uh, alternate plan here. Um, I would also respectfully suggest to, that uh, Mr. Gafredo might need to recuse himself from this as well, because if there is, uh, it's important that the work that is done to produce a different plan be completely free from any real or perceived bias. And if something is put forward that is obviously uh, just being set up to fail, uh, that would benefit uh, Mr. Gafredo's spouse. And so I would uh, urge you to consider that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Um, Pam Rooney. Good morning, Pam Rooney speaking. I am now a member of the um, building committee, Jones Library Building Committee, and I am working hard to get up to speed. I have read all of the reports, the Kuhn Riddle report, the Western Builders um, cost assessment, and the Anna Pop report from several years ago preceding uh, the discussion about expansion of the library. So I feel like I have uh, a pretty good sense of, of what is trying to go on, but I am uh, eager to learn as much as possible um, about uh, the library physical structure and your all knowledge of it. So I'm listening in and appreciate uh, that you're focusing on this. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, Arlie? Hi again. Hello. Um, you know, I'm new sort of to this whole issue too, and I have been exploring the Jones Library website and all the information and all the work that you've done. But one of the things that really strikes me is that I keep hearing over and over again that this uh, expansion is necessary for the children and the teenagers and the English language learners. But what I also hear about this town is that our population is aging and that in fact, the school population is shrinking. And so, and that one of the problems or one of the reasons for this is that Amherst is becoming very expensive for young families and that they're choosing, you know, like Florence or East Hampton because it's more affordable. So I hear these two things and I keep hearing this rationale for this large expansion. And yet I'm hearing, also my neighbor told me that at Fort River, they've had to like cut classes a lot because they don't have enough students for to necessitate so many classrooms. So I'm just a little confused of this rationale. And yet there's also this other aspect um, that's going on in our town. So, you know, I do have a preference to not do a huge expansion. That is the truth, you know, but I do appreciate all the work that you're doing and I see, you know, what you all have been doing. So, you know, I'm a little confused at this point, but I do have a preference for keeping things more modest and historic preservation, less demolition, things like that. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Arlie. Um, Bob, I see your hand up again, but I'm assuming that you just never put it down. Thanks. Okay, so, oh, there's one more hand up. And then I guess that's it with public comment. Uh, Hedy, start up. 
Thank you, Farah, very much. And thank you, everybody on the Library Committee for the work that you've done so far in having the needs of the library in our town in mind as you think about what the building, our beautiful Jones Library building needs. Um, I'm very conscious of the work that needs to be done on the HVAC system, the roof and the fire suppression system. Um, I'm a member of the Amherst Historical Commission but I urge you very strongly not to put off the process of rebidding this project to the end of the year. Um, I attended my first meeting in District 1 as I'm moving to North Amherst, and I was very conscious during the meeting of the very many, many, many serious needs that our town has, even with a shrinking population, as Ali mentions. I think in view of these kinds of issues, it would be very foolhardy for the town and the library committee to proceed with any kind of rebidding project. Thank you. Thank you, Hedy. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Um, Hedy, your hand is still up. Okay. All right, um, thank you to everybody who made a comment. Um, let's get back to our agenda. So as we all know, the trustees last week voted to reject the bid. And yesterday we voted to um, ask the MB MBLC to extend the deadline for us to rebid on the project. But meanwhile, we are going to start working on a backup plan just to take care of what the problems are at hand right now but that um before that why don't we go to the monthly buildings and grounds report george uh i don't have a lot new to report on the buildings and grounds report uh aside from you know we uh are going to be swapping over to air conditioning next week as uh, New England summer has decided to come a little bit early. So uh, I just painted the atrium roof with the greenhouse paint to cut down on the UV. Uh, and that is pretty much it. Uh, you know, fingers crossed that when we change over to air conditioning next week, everything operates and uh, we have a cool building. So to stay tuned on that. Thanks, George. We've had some rain, so have there been any leaks or? Yeah. Yes. Atrium yes. and other atrium. parts? Atrium. atrium, primarily atrium. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know. I noticed while I was up there because I was just on the roof this morning. The, um, you know, all the 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 glazing and everything on the atrium roof. It's all just very dried and cracked, and um, so, so yeah, okay. it's. It is what it is. Um, everybody knows their bucket brigade routine, and um, you know we just always hope for the best when we get some heavy rains. Right. Um, and uh, George, like, what is I know, like from last year. So when you s uh, switch over to air conditioning, what are the, what is the one thing that that's really problematic, like that it's going to give up? Uh. Well, I mean. As we know, a lot of our systems are older. The cooling tower itself isn't as old as the rest of the systems, but all of our pipes and valves are, you know, from the 1990s renovation. Uh, we've had several large valves that have either uh, been stuck or not closed or opened properly. Uh, that has negated the ability for the entire building to be either cooled or heated. Um, when the building was uh, retrofitted in the early 90s, there were a lot of backups. Uh, so fortunately, in most circumstances, the remainder of the systems can make up for any losses for uh, things that aren't working anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's it's at the point where to make a repair on some of these things is very expensive because you're talking about shutting off the water main. Uh, some of these things are very hard to reach that there might have to be some 
uh, you know, they might have to remove some walls or ceilings or things like that to get at these pipes properly to replace them. So uh, we've just been doing the best we can uh, with what we've got um, in anticipating our, what our next move is going to be. Um, we're trying to avoid going to the capital campaign for to, to the capital uh, committee for emergency funds to do some major repairs if they're not going to be needed or you know if the project goes forward or if we go forward with the alternate we're trying to be to be mindful of that and just do the best with what we've got so if there are problems once you switch over what what would me what would that mean in terms of the building would we have to close the building for any period of time it really depends on what it is i mean if it's something that can be repaired uh that's not out of the way that's not in a public space we don't have to close the building. If it's something that is going to take a bit longer, say if it's if it's something that we have to go to the town for emergency funds for that may be a much more involved project, we may have to close the building because it gets too hot or right. because the construction is just going to be uh, too hazardous for us to be open to the public and for staff to be working here. Uh, right. It really depends on what it is. Okay. All right. Um, Eugene, Eugene uh, and Sharon, anything to add to that? No. Eugene, any questions? Nope. Just uh, take the minutes, and this is pretty much all new to me. So no. Okay. Um. Oh. Um. George, I meant to ask you any updates on the van. Yes. Yes, we, we have, have the van. Oh we have yeah. A van. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> the the little victories. Uh, the okay. the van uh came in late January. Um. We had the charging station installed, um, and yeah, it's it's been fabulous. We haven't had a chance to have it lettered up yet, uh, but we went we're we went through the deaccessioning process for the old van. We still are in possession of it, mm -hmm. uh, but that paperwork has been sent to town hall, and they just need to determine uh, how or when they're going to dispose of it. But yes, we've had the new van since late January. Um, it's really wonderful, uh, and we're. We seem to be only needing to charge it maybe once a week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got about a hundred to one hundred and twenty mile range, which for a vehicle really isn't a lot. But considering that we do most of our use just around town driving, it it, it lasts for easily a week uh, before we need to recharge it or anything like that. But it's been really wonderful. It's been nice having something reliable to do branch deliveries on. Um, it's a bit larger. The 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 lifting for the bins is a little bit lower because it has a lower floor. There's more headroom. Um, and, you know, it's electric. We're doing something great for the environment. So uh, very, very proud to finally have that and have reliable transportation. Something to be, to smile about. For and I believe it's the first fully electric commercial vehicle in town. I know that Town Hall has some electric cars like, uh, you know, the parking authority and uh, I know there's a few electric cars around, but I believe it's the first commercial all-electric vehicle in town. I could be wrong, but I believe we're the first. All right. That's great. It's good to have some good news. Um, all right. Let's go. All right. So I guess now we get to the main thing of our meeting, the backup building project planning. So... As we are, um, you know, right, asking the MBLC for an extension to to rebid once the summer slam um, rates are waiting for, you know, uh, to get better bids in the fall, the one thing we have to do is see what we can do in the meantime and prepare for if. The bids if the pro if the project does not go through at the end of the year. So I think one of the main things we need to we we have to start discussing. And I guess Sharon, I am going to look to you now a little bit because I know there are things we need to do to go forward. Like I, it's just it's not it's the HVAC it's the roof, but we have to go out to architects, to contractors. So what is the process and what are the next steps that we can take simultaneously? As yeah, we so are? so George and I were, were talking about, you know, how, how, how to proceed. So 
we we have two number one issues and and that's the hvac system and the fire alert system and, and the sprinklers as we saw last summer um it, when it rains hard um our our sprinkler system just can't handle it so we so so all of these all of these requirements are now going to go through the JCPC process, you know, one at a time um, so that it's affordable for the town and, um, and, and the town can take care of uh, finishing up the school uh, and, and DPW and fire. And then the library repairs will just happen slowly over time um, as needed, you know, emergency case by case basis. So, so starting with HVAC and fire alert system, and I'll have George jump in too. The fire alert system, uh, repairing that is kind of an easy, um, an easy fix, meaning they could probably come in and disrupt as little as possible and we could get it done. The HVAC uh, project on the other hand, now we're starting to get into the territory where it's possible we'd ha actually have to move out of the building. Um, I don't know for sure, which brings us to before we do anything, we have to hire an architect. Um, we have to go out to bid, um, you know, and, and George and I would meet with them and, and talk about, you know, here are our first two issues that need to happen during FY25. Um, and that would be the HVAC and the fire alert system and the sprinkler system and, and see how that all plays out. Um, so that's, that's what's going on in my head. Um, we don't have, we don't have time to, to do an overall, you know, picture. And the town has been, ha has been clear that, um, you know, if the full blown expansion doesn't move, then, then the library, you know, moves down because it won't have the grant funding and all of that. And we just have to have to get the repairs done um, over time. And, that's totally fine. So, um, George, I'd love to hear what you have to say about, you know, HVAC fire alert. Can I just ask far. a question? Um, totally. Sharon, uh, just when you were saying we have to go back to JCPC for the for HVAC fire alert and sprinkler, JCP. So that would be we would go to JCPC in twenty twenty five. So right. what what I understand is because we're still in FY twenty four. We there could be time uh, for the town manager. The town manager could request funds uh, this fiscal year for FY25. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. Otherwise, yeah, we just take FY25 as it comes and, and then get the money for FY26. So it's, you know, these are just all the all these different possibilities right. and and we need paul to be included on like in the conversation so there's no like if the hvac system just busts tomorrow there is where is is there an emergency fund like the there it, yeah. there okay. is yeah. Right. yeah yeah and the town would it's the town's emergency fund correct that's what I understand. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't know the specifics of it, but this is what JCPC uh, told me. And, and just, sorry. And then George, uh, um, and what would something like that cost? Do we have any numbers? Like do, do, is there a ballpark? You know, when we did the feasibility study a decade ago, that was $75,000, uh, but that a was decade a ago. decade ago. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Okay. And um, so my, I had one other question. All right, George, just go ahead and I'll look through my notes and ask the next one. So um, bear with me. I'm going to start with a little history lesson uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for both Eugene and anybody else who hasn't <laughs> been following this project along since day one. Um, so not long after... Uh, not long after we we started this we we did look into what if we what if we couldn't have the project and we didn't go forward and we had to uh fix what we had and that's when we hired western builders i forget the exact date but it was uh early on in the project uh we had come up with a prioritized list of what would need to be repaired in the building 
Um, and Western builders took that and pretty much put dollar amounts on them, not including any design fees or architectural fees or administration fees, but what would they cost? Um, so we had come out with that. Um, and then back in 2000, we had Kuhn Riddle take that data and update it uh, with more current numbers, but also look at it um, as to what should be prioritized and what could be bundled to make it more cost effective. Also taking into consideration accessibility because once you spend a certain amount of money, I believe it's 30% of the value of the building, uh, you have to start looking at accessibility requirements. So Kuhn Riddle took all of that data and figured out what would be the best options to go forward with that. And they came up with two scenarios. One of them would be dealing with the roof structure and the outside of the building. The other, and, and the other part of it would be all the interior improvements. Um, and there were two options. One of them, bear with me. Um, option one was to deal with the skylight and the elevator in phase one. Phase two would be exterior improvements. And phase three would be all the interior, which would include the uh, the MEP, the, the mechanical, electric, and plumbing. Um, and they put some escalation into it. Of course, this was in 2020. So we're already beyond what their escalation figures were. Um, option one, uh, which was the skylight, the elevator. Um, you know, phase one was almost two and a half million phase two with the exterior improvements was not about another two and a half million. And the big one, which included, uh, because we'd be spending so much more money had to include the accessibility. That was the HVAC. That was the plumbing, electrical fire. Uh, that was a bit over 12 million. Now these are 2000 year, 2000 figures. And again, not including any administration not including any offsite locations because for some of this, we would have to move out of the building. So the grand total for that, for option one was almost $17 million. And that was in 2000, year 2000 money. Um, option two, which in my opinion would be the better option because it addresses the HVAC, it addresses the fire, it addresses the accessibility improvements, uh, it addresses the skylight um, that puts the bigger figure first. And again, that's a bit over $12 million. Phase two would be all the exterior improvements for another two and a half million. And the grand total on that again in 2000, year to 2020 figures is a bit over $14 million. Again, without any, any administration costs. Um, so I would say my my feeling is, you know, we spent the money with Kuhn Riddle to come up with these scenarios, to come up with from an architect's point of view as to what the best options would be. Um, my feeling is that I would like to see that happen, but reality, it's a big chunk of money. And I don't think that we will be able to do that unless we had the town support to go forward with a uh, two phase, probably looking at over $20 million. I, I I couldn't tell you, you would need to have somebody look at these figures and adjust them for, you know, what the, what the current pricing is and add in administration costs and also add in moving and temporary site. Um, but it's, it's a big chunk of money. There's, there's no question about it. So, I mean, the other option is that maybe we should be looking at what if we pull out the most important things, you know, the the fire system, the HVAC and the roof and try to do those either one at a time or to combine one or two of them, what would be the most feasible? Um, of those three, the fire system is probably the most affordable. Uh, you would probably still need to hire an architect for it. Um, the HVAC, you would probably need to have a design study first. Now these figures were also put together with mind of just replacing in kind, you know, take what we have for an existing HVA system, HVAC system, 
and modernize it as best you can without making any major changes. That means staying with gas boilers. That means staying with the pumps wherever they are, just replacing them and making any updates possible. Now, that would be more efficient, but ultimately you would like to make things as efficient as possible. And that will probably also cost more money. So, you know, you could go forward with say, like if we were able to make a capital request this year, I would be pushing for the fire system and have an HVHC design study funds um, to look at it, you know, as what we should do as best moving forward. Did that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, but George, when you were, yeah. The, that's I mean, a lot, it, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a lot of information. Oh my that's goodness, so much information. But I have questions and uh -huh. they might sound dumb, so I'm really sorry. Yeah. But when you were saying option one, two, three, mm -hmm. or were you saying phase one, two, three? So option one was skylight and elevator. Is that is that what you said? said or was that phase one? Option one, yes. Option one was three phases. It was skylight, elevator, okay. yeah. Phases. Uh, and so there would be skylight, elevator, phase two would be the external. Mm -hmm. Phase three was the internal, and that would be the right. HVAC, fire. HVAC, fire, electrical, plumbing, accessibility. And all and this would be what in 2020 numbers is 20 was 20 million. It was it was almost seventeen million dollars in twenty twenty numbers, and again, that's without administration or temporary location. Right. Okay. And and this would be this option would be done in phases. Yeah, so that you didn't have to relocate right away, or am I understanding? We that? would have to. Yeah, we would have to relocate for. I mean, if the skylight is getting replaced, we would have to relocate right. for a period of time. Okay. We wouldn't have to relocate for phase two because it's all exterior. Phase three, we would have to. So we would have to move twice for for the first option that they gave. And in my opinion, the first option is just, um, it's not addressing the most important things first, I guess, in my opinion. Right. Can I ask one more question? Just really ask as much as you want. No. So if we would have to move, uh, I just I don't understand. What I don't understand is the way this is set up. So mm -hmm. if we would have to move out anyways, why would it not be skylight, elevator, interior, and then ex exterior, so that you don't have to move out twice? They were. I think they were attempting to. Um, save us for having to address the accessibility and figuring out where it would be best, like what parts of the project would be best to do in conjunction with addressing the accessibility requirements. Okay. And and that's why they, they weren't necessarily kicking it, kicking the can down the road. They were saying what would be the best place to bundle together the accessibility improvements. Okay. But again, option two all that stuff is put to the top, which is you're spending more money first. Okay, and but option and option can you repeat two, option two to yeah. me? Yeah. Option two, phase one, is the skylight, uh, re replacing the south elevator, interior, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, structural improvements, and accessibility. Okay. That's phase one. Phase two is all exterior. So in the second option, you'd only be moving out of the building once. But again, That's... it's the most expensive. Right. And was this over 20 million in 2020? Altogether, um, again, before any administration or offsite, it was about 15 million. Option okay. two, the bottom line was slightly less money. Okay. But you'll be spending more sooner. I guess is the more best up way to front. Put it. More okay. up front. Yeah. Because of the moving out portion. And you're doing all the big you're doing all the bigger ticket items first. Right. Okay. But again, yeah. it's a big chunk of change. It's it's right. more money than what we were asking the town for for the expansion. So right. 
I don't see how on. that's possible to do. Right. So really, it's going to come down to having conversations with the town and deciding what should we do? Should we go forward and just start doing it piecemeal? It's going to take a long time to get through all these capital projects um, if we start doing them piecemeal. <clears throat> but if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. And none of this would address anything like fixing the teen space, yeah. uh, doing anything about the children's room, the ESL no. space, bathrooms. So we no. the accessibility thing, would it include so none of that there would be some changes to the existing bathrooms but we wouldn't be adding any bathrooms we okay. wouldn't be expanding any spaces uh this doesn't include knocking down any walls trying to reconfigure the existing spaces um right it, you're you're not gaining you're not gaining space right uh, and you're, you're not just doing you're not, the basics yeah we're just doing the, we're just doing the basics and again that is looking at it just replacing, you know, for instance, the HVAC, you're, re you're replacing it in kind, more right. modern systems, but you're not looking at it from a different perspective of how energy efficient can we make it? How green can we make it? So if they are more mo modern, would they, are they not natural, are they naturally not greener? Well, they, they would, they would be, but you know, you're you're talking about replacing gas boilers with gas boilers, replacing electric pumps with electric pumps. Yes, they're going to be more efficient than what was installed in the early 1990s. But you're also not looking at you're not looking at solar. You're not looking at heat pumps. You're not you're not looking at ways to uh, get rid of fossil fuel. Right. Wow. Okay. Which you know, in the grand scheme of things, would be preferable. To be able to do that but those figures are based off of just replacing in kind because we right. were trying to make it as affordable as possible right and we would have to go back to the town for all of this yes yeah absolutely okay um sharon anything to add to that uh no i no. not that um no, uh, you know, it's this, this process will take longer and, and cost a heck of a lot more money. Mm -hmm. um, it, and in theory, what will make it more affordable is that the payments will be spread out over, you know, the next decade or so. Right. Yeah. And, and, I'll, and I'll also add that both of these options were roughly laid out to take about five years. Okay. If you did them one, you know, if you did them and, right, one right up to the other. And that's if you did it that way. What right. we're saying now, I mean, that was done four years ago. What we're yeah. saying now is we can't wait. HVAC and fire alarm has to happen now. So right. even those, those two different options, they don't work anymore. Um, so we, this work, they're not, pri they're done. not, they're not realistic. No. Nah. I mean, they're, they're, it's realistic because that's what we need, but it, it 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 just won't happen. It's a lot of it's a lot of money, with no with no grant funding or anything like that. You're strictly relying on the capital on the on JCPC. Okay, uh, when you said fire alarm, I mean it is working, right? We just need to. It's functional, but the pan yeah. the panel is you know the panel is from the early nineteen nineties. Uh, there's over a hundred. Uh, they're called addressable units, but it's basically like the the heat detectors, the smoke detectors. Uh, there's well over a hundred. They're not addressable, which means the building has zones, whereas modern code each detector will tell you like if it goes off it'll tell you exactly which detector right. it is yeah. uh they just don't have that capability uh the panel it's not being made anymore the company doesn't even exist anymore so anytime we have a breakdown it's basically finding uh hunting for parts uh to mm -hmm. to to make it work but i mean this is it's a safety system it it should be it should be repaired and working right. and place and up to date yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, Eugene, did you have any questions? I'm sorry. I feel like I asked a zillion questions. Did you? 
You're muted. No. Weird. My unmute wasn't working. Um, no, I don't have any questions. This is all very, um, very illuminating. Um, so let, so I guess we just have to figure out. So what do what is the next step? Just to even do these basics, like just to 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 replace the HVAC and the fire alarm system. Just if we start with that, we still need to get an architect, right, Sharon? We yeah. have to put. So what would be? What could we do starting? Like, I mean, what I is the immediate step? I just I have to talk to Paul to find okay. out um if okay. if this is what he wants to see from uh George and me a, a proposal to hire an architect uh for FY25. Okay. So that's what I and, would recommend. And it's it's probably very feasible that we could hire an architect uh to do both of those things, package them together, you know, do the fire system and uh do a design study on the HVAC. Okay. Yeah, and that that's important. That's an important clarification. Is not that both things will get done at the same time. Right. Just the fire alert system would happen first while a study was being done on HV. Yeah, the, the the fire alert system isn't something that uh, you know. Aside from electricity, it's not it's not an energy efficiency thing. It's it's you know, let's we have this building. The building structure is not going to change. The rooms aren't going to change. We need to update all of our systems. Uh, whereas the HVAC. There's so many changes that could potentially happen. It requires a design study. It it touches so many different things. And and yeah. as we've just learned, this the building is just so hot with asbestos and lead that anytime holes are poked, the staff that's have gonna, to get out. That's so, gonna exacerbate yeah. the yeah. So the <clears throat> Trying to stay positive here. So the, the next step is basically for you and George, or does this, for you and George to talk to Paul first, or do we go back to the trustees? Like, or do you write oh. up a proposal first? How, how, what would be the next step? Uh, uh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I just thought I would just go and talk to Paul and find out, um, only because time is of the essence. What right. is it? It's almost June. Yeah. Um, if we waited to present at the June, I, that might be fine. You know, George could have the proposal. He could start getting it ready. The trustees could talk about it on the 11th at their next trustee meeting. And then we would have that proposal to submit to to Paul and, and have a conversation with that like that. So that would work. Okay. But this is how um this is how you proceeded before, right? Just to say it, that I wasn't on this committee when this first round happened with these options. So I yeah, I, I, yeah I'm not Yeah, clear. normally oh. normally so um with any building repair that that uh is going to cost us more money than than what we have available to us uh we go through the jcpc process um so you know george and i put together uh documentation we bring it here to buildings and facilities and then buildings and facilities brings it to trustees trustees makes a recommendation and then we submit that documentation to the jcpc and it goes like that so there isn't a separate there's not another committee that's just not this is just like any other uh building issues yeah okay so if we if you and george were to work on a proposal in your copious free time <laughs> um and you would then bring it to us to our meeting next month uh, so so no so he's going to work on that and then we you we you uh you'll bring this report back to the trustees on the 11th and then if they give us authorization then george and i will just go directly to paul and have a conversation okay so it's it's, tr it's trickier because you know we have we have the expansion and renovation project looming above us with with an unknown future that is in Paul's hands. Right. So we really need to have a discussion with Paul as to what he wants us to go forward with. Okay. JCPC before we can 
bring it to the trustees? So I bring this to trustees on the 11th. You and George work on the proposal. Trustees give you the okay. You don't have to bring it back to the trustees, the proposal. You can just bring that to Paul or do you bring it back to, to us here? We'll go, we'll go to Paul, see what happens. Go and Paul. and then we'll report back to you guys whenever next BNF is. Okay. And um, so the other thing, the other question I had was, okay, so then this goes, eventually goes to JCPC, right? Correct. Because we don't have, I don't, I don't know. So because the JC process, JCPC process has already completed for FY25, yeah. this is, that's why it's just a, a Paul question. Um, uh, so this is where yeah. you, Paul dips into any emergency fund because otherwise he would have to JCP. That's why I asked about JCPC earlier, because I know that they're done with their work for the year. Right. Right. But right. the budget hasn't, been approved that I know of. Okay. Um, for FY twenty five, mean the town's budget hasn't been approved. Okay. And, okay. Uh, so, so again, all I can do is talk to Paul and and yeah, okay, see right. what he says. And do we know because we know that a lot of the the funds the the funds raised by the capital campaign have nothing to because most people have donated to the expansion project. We don't know if anyone would bring that money around for basic. Yeah, right? yeah. The capital campaign will have to work all that out. You know, in the right. fall, if the project doesn't move forward, then they will reach out to all the donors, um, and Just and figure would, all that yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. And meanwhile, so then would that be? Would it be a situation where would there be grants or stuff that the town could pursue for this? Or it would just have to come out of the towns. It, it, it's a it would be a town yeah. thing. Okay. Um, we don't we won't have a team that we have now. Um, you know, you'd have right. me and George. So yeah, you are a mighty no. team, you and George. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. But basically, what we're looking at is the town share would now for this backup plan would. Would not be fifty. What was the uh, the exact numbers? Fifteen point fifteen for the point renovation. eight for yeah. renovation. So for this backup plan, could go over twenty. Easily, right? Easily. Because twenty twenty numbers were over twenty. Okay. Right. Yep. Wow. Okay. So I so I have what I need to report back to the trustees. I have what I need to report to the building committee today. I guess the next steps are, we just wait, we wait till our meeting. And meanwhile, George and George, you'll work on this proposal, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, it's a lot to think about, a lot to process. And so, so much unknown, yeah. right? Yeah. And so much like when I, when I just, just sitting back and thinking about how we had the school project and how much more it costs so many years later. Now the, just, just doing these band-aid fixes to the library and how much more it's going to cost the town. It's a lot. So yeah. I guess we keep our fingers. Oh, I mean, while we work on this, we we stay hopeful that the bids, when we go out to bid, that we get something more reasonable and that the architects can work on design that lower costs somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anything else that anyone wants to? Any other topics? Nothing. All right. So I guess, uh, and I guess is our next meeting on the 17th of June. Eugene, did that work for you? Did you see Sharon's last email? I think that. I think I, that does work for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. The other one, middle school graduation 
got in the way of the 18th. All right. I, I will state, uh, based on this is the first meeting I've been to, um, uh, based on the kind of nature of some, some of the discussions here, um, I, I might explore actually recusing myself from this committee. I'm mean, actually kind of in agreement with Maria Kapicki, um, if I pronounce that last name right. Um, so I'll, I'll have some conversations with uh, uh, the State Ethics Commission, but um, I, I might not be able to continue my work here just based on how we're actually talking about things here. And I want to make sure that, um, you know, there's no um, real or perceived conflict of interest occurring. All right. Thank you, Eugene. Sharon, would sure. that mean that we would we would have to get we would have to have another trustee on the board on, on this yeah. committee, right? OK. Yeah. All right. So, Eugene, you'll look into that and let us know. OK. All right. I guess we can adjourn. Thank you so much. Thanks. That was a lot of George. Yeah. I might reach up for some of that information for my notes so I can report back. Because that's a lot of numbers and a lot of information. But thank you so much. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. See you.